Hi people, welcome to this part 10 of this tutorial for beginners in Revit. Let's start! Some of the tips I will be showing here you may already know, but it's never a waste of time to remind them. Then we will talk about view range and underlay in plan views. This can be a bit confusing in the beginning, so I will try to explain this the straightest way to the point as I can. Ok, I have opened a file in Revit. I'm going to start with these simple tips. Now, there aren't the properties in the project browser windows, which usually are located at the left of the screen. It's common that we close those windows for any reason, and then we can't remember exactly how to restore them. But don't worry, it's actually pretty easy. We can do that with the right button menu. And look, there are the properties, here at the bottom. Then repeat the process, go to Browsers and choose Project Browser. So here you have both of them. I find it very important to use this menu, the right button menu, and play with those features. Our mind tends to memorize these options the more we use this. Now have a look at this view. I showed to you in previous chapters how to duplicate the view. If I click with the right button on this floor plan view, the ground floor, I have those options, duplicate and duplicate with detailing. In duplicate with detailing, it creates a new view exactly the same as before, including all the annotative elements. However, if I just choose duplicate, I create a copy of the ground floor without the annotation objects. Dimension lines, room tags, or other text elements are not shown. However, rooms, yes, because they are considered real elements. View range and underlay. This explanation requires full attention, as it will take several minutes. Now have a look at this different example. This is a project of a two-story house. We are in the ground floor, this is the first floor, then I'm going to show you an elevation from the south, which has this perspective. Ok, going back to the floor plan, I'm going to click on view range, which you can find on the extent section. The view range defines basically what you can see on a floor plan, and be careful, this is not related at all with hiding elements. Now we imagine we are a bird flying above the house. And to be able to see exactly what we have here, we have to slice the building with a horizontal plane and get rid of everything that's above. But in which height is located that plane? Those settings is what we can edit on view range. Now I'm going to switch to a section which is the view from this vertical plane, towards that direction. The section 1. Now to help you I will enclose here the window of the view range, but have in mind if you are in a section or in an elevation, the view range is not available, only for floor plans. The values here are the ones set by default, but for now I suggest you to focus just on the primary range. The bottom is located exactly at the ground floor, you can see that the offset is zero. Then the cut plane is at 1500 mm above the same level, the zero ground floor. And the top range is at 2300 above the bottom. Now this is important. All these planes have to follow this order. It's not possible to put the top plane below the cut plane, or the cut plane below the bottom. If we try to do it, we get a warning message. Also, the cut plane is locked at the ground floor, because it's the view that we are currently on. Now, I'm going to increase the z-coordinate of the cut plane, and I want to leave it above the doors. 2200 mm is fine. When I set that distance here, I can see the wall openings disappearing because they are no longer crossed by the cut section, 
However, the doors are still visible. Why? They are below the cut plane and above the bottom. We can see these things when we switch to an elevation. Look, we can consider the visible area here starting at the cut plane facing down towards the ground floor level. Another difference that we notice in this floor plan can be seen in the stairs. Before, the visible part of the stairs comprised around half of the rises, until I reached the height of 1.5 meters. But after updating the cutting plane up to 2200, the majority of stairs are now visible. Then, let's switch to the first floor. But before, I'm going to add a chair here, on the ground floor just next to the stairs. Then you will understand why I'm doing this. I'm going to switch to the first floor. Ah, and have in mind that I'm using a visual style with colors, consistent colors in this case, so I can understand the parts where I have a floor, which is in grey color. Here, if you look at the area around the stairs, there is an empty space, because the floor doesn't go here. We could supposedly see what is below, but we don't, and also the chair that I have just created is not seen. This is because in the view range I have the same default settings that I had previously in the ground floor, but applied to the first floor. That's it, the view range doesn't cover the floor below, so if I change the bottom plane to the ground floor, by selecting it in this tab. Ah, and I got this error message. The view depth can't be above the bottom, so let's set it as ground floor as well. And then the floor below and the stairs are now visible. Now I want to focus in a specific detail. When I change the bottom range to the ground floor, this tag that says freezer has appeared here. In fact, there is a freezer in the ground floor, which is not shown, because it's behind the floor. But, as you can see, the tag is still there. It doesn't matter if there is a floor above it. So, if these things happen in your projects, what you can do is hide this freezer from the current view. The only problem here is that sometimes it's hard to select a tag when it's under the floor. One of the solutions is hiding temporarily the floor and then I can hide in view, I mean the freezer. This time I'm going to try a different tool for selection, the filter tool. I like this method, especially when I have plenty of elements and it's hard to select what I want. I open a selection area through everything, click on the filter icon, it's located at the modify tab, and here I can select elements by category. First, I will check known and then select the floors. There are two. Yes, the ground floor and the first floor. Now, I have to go to temporary height and select height elements. Now the drawing is even more messy with the ground floor elements shown, but that's fine. The only thing I need is finding the freezer and this time I will hide it permanently in this view. Finally, click again on the glasses and reset temporary height isolate. Now let's talk about the top plane. In the first instance it may seem a bit weird why do I need this plane. As we look down from the cut plane to the bottom, apparently the objects above are left behind. In fact, that's true for most elements, except those that belong to three categories, windows, casework and generic models. Here I want to show you an example for a window and a cabinet, but before, look at this nice feature in Revit, tile views, on the view tab. It displays all the open views in the workspace. That's interesting. Now the section 1 I don't need, so I'm going to close it and move the other two in order to have them side to side. Now it's going to be easier to explain what I want. I changed the cut plane in the view range 
to 1050. And you can see that both window and the upper cabinet, which is from the casework category, are still displayed. That's not the case of the oven. So if I move it to that area, you can see that it disappears from the floor plan. The oven is not part of one of these three categories. Notice that the cabinet displays in the same way even if I move it to the place between the cut and bottom planes. And the same happens for the windows also. View depth. The view depth is not part of the primary range. It's an option to display elements beyond the bottom plane. Example. Let's draw some walls on the ground floor plan, just next to the exterior walls of the house. Ah, and their height, I want it to reach just the first floor. So I change unconnected option to first floor. OK, now I will go to the first floor view and make sure the three planes at the primary view range cover just this floor, like in the image that I'm showing here. Then, the walls I have just drawn are appearing here because the view depth is set as unlimited. It means that everything below the bottom plan shows in the drawing. If I change the view depth to ground floor, from now on, it will have its limits there. The result is almost the same, except this little portion of the floor at the ground floor, which is located under the ground floor level, and that's why now it's not showing. However, look what happens if I change it to first floor. The objects below disappear. So, what is the difference between bottom level and view depth? First, I am going to change the view style to hidden lines. It will be better to understand. And first, I open a selection window to cover everything, and I realize that the elements located in the view depth area are not selected. But I can select these walls individually by clicking on each of them one at a time. Another difference is that the line style for the objects just on the view depth is different. We can understand that by going to the line style under additional settings on the manage tab. Here the tag beyond is dedicated for the view depth. You will see, I'm going to change the line color to a blue one. And also, for example, the line pattern. Let's put a dash line with a dot. Click on apply. And now you can see that it's easier to distinguish those elements. Ah, and this is important. If I want to restore the previous style, it doesn't work by pressing Ctrl Z. And after clicking apply, it doesn't do anything if I cancel the window. Basically, I have to put it back how it was. Cuttable categories. Now I want to explain roughly how different elements act when they are crossed by the cut plane. Construction elements like walls, windows, doors, roofs are cuttable elements. For those, the section displayed is exactly where the cut plane intersects. On the other hand, most of non-construction elements like furniture objects are non-cuttable. That's the case of the things in this kitchen. There is a microwave here, an oven, a cabinet, a freeze, and also a table and chairs. They are always displayed in the same way, no matter where the cut plane passes by. These are representative elements, and usually there is no point if we show them just cut in half. Now look, if the cut plane crosses the microwave, nothing changes. Until it's completely above it, then, do you see? It does not display anymore. The same happens with the cabinet. Here, the result is not different, except that this element also displays in the top plane area, meaning that I have to move it completely above my view range to not show there. Now, I'm going to insert a window, but this time I want to load a different family. This one, you will see. Let's place it on this wall. 
Then I'm going to move it a bit down and you can see that when the cut plane intersects this area that makes an arc, the section shown in the plan starts to change because the window is a cuttable category. At certain point, when it's no longer intersected, it disappears from the view plane. But why did it happen if it's still in the view range? Because now the cut plane only intersects the wall and once the window is under it, we cannot see it in the plan view. Now I'm going to open a roof plan and have a look how roofs are commonly displayed. It looks like they are open in the middle. That's regarding the location of the cut plane. As the roof is a cuttable category, I can only see in my floor plan the section below. And you can better understand this by looking at the section view. Change the cut plane in the view range. I'm going to change the value to 2000, for example. And look, the cut section updates in the plan. To display all the roof, I can set a big number like 3500 millimeters. Then the top has to be either equal or higher than that. Click on apply and here you have the changes. You can see everything now. So to return to the previous state, always press Ctrl Z. Underlay. To explain to you the underlay, I'm going to use this example. Here we have finished modeling the level 1, the ground floor of this house. Then let's switch to level 2, which is the first floor, in order to model it. So, as you can see, this is the plan of the ground floor, and it's a bit lighter. In fact, this is the underlay. Basically, it's a layer used for our orientation when we want to draw elements here, in this case the first floor. So it's easy to recognize it, and one of its characteristics is that we can't select anything there. On the underlay panel, we control the range we want to display here. At this moment, we can see the ground floor because the range is set from the level 1 to level 2. However, it may happen that in a project you are working, you don't see anything. If that's the case, your base level might be set to known, or you may have a range where there aren't elements yet. Another option here is the underlay orientation. If it says look down, it's like that we are a bird flying above, looking from up to the ground. If we change to look up, imagine now the house above our heads and we are looking from down to up. You can see the difference here, this time the door openings are shown because they are exactly at the level 1. And for better understanding this, look it in a 3D perspective. Ok, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and also I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, Cad in Black, if you aren't a subscriber yet. Thank you and I'm sure we will meet next time.